In this module, we're going to be working with some of the more advanced roadway design tools inside Autodesk InfoWorks 360. In this exercise, we'll be designing a road that connects our county road spur here down to our testing facility to the southwest. Autodesk has introduced a new type of roads inside InfoWorks 360 that allows for better design. These road types are called component roads. If I select Roads and then Design Roads, I can select Add Component Roads. And much like Civil 3D, you have the option of selecting assemblies and or subassemblies or components that can be attached and create a more modular roadway layout. I'm going to select inside my palette the two-lane assembly and I'll snap here to my center line of this, this uh, county road spur. When I do, I'll have my, uh, my crosshairs will start dragging the tangent. I will have an option to set my design speed. I'm going to go ahead and set that at 45 miles per hour. And then I'm going to start drawing in uh, points of intersection for my road. And based on my design speeds, and the design criteria file I have specified in the model properties, curves and spirals are going to automatically be added along with super elevation. So I'm just going to go in, as I said, and drop in my points of intersection and tie in here right across from the entrance to our test facility. And I'll right click and select end draw. Now my roadway is created. I'm going to change the function from a freeway to a local road. Let's take a look at some of the options we have. We can show road geometry, design speed, super elevation, and roadside grading. I'm going to display my roadside grading and change up a couple of the options with it. I want to set this to a fixed slope grading of 2 to 1 cut and 4 to 1 in fill. And that's going to control how my roadway ties into the surface. I can also set a grading limit. I'll set that to 45 feet. And that means that at the 45 foot mark off of the offset, if you're done tying in, then that's great. Uh, but if you haven't daylighted yet, then it's just going to shoot down straight to the surface. So in that instance, you'll need a wall of some sort. Just like with design roads, component roads have uh, similar grips. We can take these grips and slide them. I can slide this grip along the center line of the county road. That will adjust its position on that county road. I can grip edit this point of intersection using the cube grip and just drag it and drop it. And you'll notice every time I do that, the roadway is uh, recalculating. So you'll see a, a fairly significant delay every time you finish this. So we've edited our road. We're not going at quite the skew across the railroad tracks that we were initially going. Let's take a look at our road in 3D. I'll switch up to a 3D view just by dragging my mouse and left clicking. And you'll see that, uh, as I said earlier, with the grading limits that I set, when I reach that 45 foot mark, uh, the surface is just going to drop off, which is not really desirable behavior for what we're going to do. Uh, I can look here and see I have some, some pretty deep cuts and some pretty significant fills. And I know this isn't as optimum as it could be. Uh, so luckily, 
InfraWorks has a function called uh, Profile Optimization. But first, I do want to add, before I do this, uh, well, let's look at our profile view. Let's see what we can see here. There's not really a lot of PVIs here. I think this could be cleaned up a, a pretty good bit. Um, so what we're going to do is go into the Analyze tab, and we're going to select Profile Optimization. What this is going to do is take your entire model, upload it to the cloud, and consuming cloud credits, it will use your criteria to optimize a profile for, uh, for the best fit. You'll see that I'm getting a warning. Uh, my minimum PVI spacing is, uh, is exceeded. I see that's set to 135. I'll go ahead and change that value. Let's set that to 250. And I still have a problem. So if you look down, you can see our anchored PVIs. I can go back into my profile view that I was in before. Uh, and I notice that the very first PVI Number two is 4.91 feet from the first one. So it appears that what it was doing was tying in here to the, uh, to the edge of pavement where we connected to our county spur road. I don't necessarily want it to do that. Uh, for profile optimization, we can take into account construction costs. We can put in borrow pits uh, for mass haul purposes. Uh, do we want to use bridges or tunnels or would we rather hug the ground? Uh, and then we can also input our construction and earthwork cost. This is one of those things that the more granular you put in the data, uh, the more accurate your profile optimization will be. Now, this, this takes a while. Through the magic of video editing, I'm going to kind of breeze through this a little bit and cut out the waiting. Uh, but you can see here that I get a message back saying that Design Road Pro uh, 4 profile has been optimized. I have a report and the results. And if I select the results, then it will import an IMX file. It'll download it and it will create a new uh, proposal that contains this profile for my roadway design. So I'll give this new road proposal a name. Let's call it Industrial Road Profile Opt. Select OK. It's going to switch me over to that proposal. And it's going to refresh everything. I can go ahead and close my uh, job status monitor. And I'll close my profile optimization window. And zoom down here. And you can see that things look a lot better. We're doing a much better job at uh, hugging the existing ground. Instead of uh, doing those really drastic cuts and fills, we do still have some cuts, of course, uh, and we do still have some fills. That's to be expected. But this gives us a much cleaner looking roadway. Let's take a look at our profile view once again, and you can see that many PVIs were added in order to optimize this, which is really good. It's what we wanted, and we're ready to go on designing.